Hello, my name is Steve. Welcome to American Steam Legacy, a channel dedicated to American railroad history. This video is the introduction to a six-part series where we take a look at the white notation for American steam locomotives. This is by no means an exhaustive list of all locomotive wheel configurations that operated on American rails, but a look at the more common types. The white notation is a system that classifies steam locomotives by their wheel configuration. In other words, the number of non-driven leading wheels, the number of coupled drive wheels, and the number of non-driven trailing wheels. We'll take a look at some of the more famous and noteworthy locomotives of each type, as well as the names by which each type is commonly known. All this and more coming up next on American Steam Legacy. <laughs> The White Notation was developed by Frederick Methven White, an American engineer of Dutch descent born in 1865. White attended Cornell University, graduating in 1889 with a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. That same year, he landed his first job as a draftsman with the Lakeshore and Michigan Southern Railroad. This will be the first of 11 railroads White would work for between 1889 and 1910, holding titles such as draftsman, mechanical engineer, general mechanical engineer, and consulting engineer. White was a bit of a job hopper, rarely staying with one railroad for more than five years. His longest tenure was with the New York Central and Hudson River Railroad, where he worked from 1899 to 1910. It was during this period in 1904 that he developed the classification system for steam locomotives that bears his name. So what is the white notation, and how does it work? Well, let's take a look at an example. The white notation is a series of three numbers that counts the number of leading wheels, the number of coupled driven wheels, and the number of trailing wheels counting from left to right. The first digit refers to the number of wheels on the pilot truck, also called the pony truck. If a locomotive does not have a pilot truck, this is indicated by a zero. In this example, the locomotive has a two-wheeled pilot, so the first number of the white notation is two. The addition of a pilot truck solved two issues. Since early steam locomotives had a tendency to derail when negotiating curves, it was found that by adding a set of non-driven wheels to the front of the locomotive mitigated this problem. The wheels of the pilot truck guide the driven wheels into the curve and dramatically reduce the possibility of derailments. As steam locomotives achieved higher speeds, a second issue came to light, the issue of nosing. Nosing is the side-to-side -side movement of the locomotive's front end when running at higher speeds. At the speed increases, the nosing effect becomes more pronounced and can be rather unpleasant for the engine crew. And this is to say nothing about the wear and tear inflicted on the locomotive itself. Nosing is caused by the alternate push-pull action of a locomotive's pistons. One piston pushing to the rear, while the other piston is on the opposite side is pushing forward. Adding additional wheels to the pilot truck further dampens the side-to-side -side movement. The number of wheels on the pilot truck can vary depending on what the locomotive was designed to do. Generally speaking, locomotives designed for high speed, like passenger and fast freight service, will have a pilot truck with four, or in some cases as many as six wheels, while locomotives built for merchandise and drag freight typically have a two-wheel pilot. There are exceptions, of course, but this is typically the case. The next number in the white notation refers to the number of coupled drive wheels. A main rod extending from the crosshead, which is attached to the steam chest, applies power to one driven wheel set, while a side rod transmits power to the other driven wheels. Drive wheels that are powered in this fashion are referred to as coupled drive wheels. The drive wheels do exactly as their name implies, because without them, the locomotive is nothing more than a stationary boiler. The drive wheels are where a locomotive's performance is either realized or possibly compromised. A locomotive's ability to use the tractive effort that it's mechanically capable of producing is dependent upon the percentage of the locomotive's weight that is concentrated on the driven wheels. Of course, there are a lot of other factors like boiler pressure, cylinder diameter, wheel diameter, and so on, but the axle loading on the driven wheel set is definitely a critical parameter. In this example, the locomotive has eight coupled drive wheels, so the second number of the white notation is eight. The last number of the white notation indicates the number of non-driven wheels on the trailing truck, also referred to as the trailer. A two-wheel or four-wheel trailing truck was most common on American steam locomotives. However, there were several that carried a six-wheel trailer. 
The need for locomotives of ever-increasing power led to larger boilers and larger fireboxes to provide heat to those boilers. As fireboxes became larger, the locomotive's frame had to be lengthened and an additional set of wheels added to carry the additional weight. The four- and six-wheeled trailers allowed the firebox to be moved completely behind and below the last set of drive wheels. The larger trailers also allowed the firebox grates to be set on an angle sloping downward towards the locomotive's boiler. This improved drafting of not only the firebox, but the boiler as well. Getting back to our example, this locomotive has a two-wheel trailer, so the last number of the white notation is two. If we combine all three numbers, the number of wheels on the pilot truck, the drivers, and the trailer, we have 282. Locomotives of the 282 wheel configuration are commonly known to American railroaders as a Mikado, or Mike for short. We'll take a more in-depth look at the Mikado in part two of the series, where we look at the eight and 10 coupled American steam locomotives. I hope you enjoyed the introduction to the white notation. Please join me in part one, where we'll look at the four and six coupled locomotives of the white notation. Again, my name's Steve, and thanks for watching.